What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC video. Now, when you think about Pokemon VGC in Generation 8, there is a certain Pokemon that should come to mind. Uh, and yes, this Pokemon has not been used too much in the most recent formats. However, it is a ever-looming threat that will always find a way to succeed, and that is Colossal. Now, Colossal is a Pokemon that has been known for its... Um, it almost seems like it was tailor-made to be the Generation 8 VGC Pokemon. It takes advantage of Dynamax or Gigantamax, which is the Generation's um, key gimmick, I guess. Uh, and it also is like just the weakness policy Pokemon. While other Pokemon can get away with not running a policy a lot of the time, Colossal almost depends on it for a lot of its sets. So. Why am I talking about Colossal? Well, as it turns out, Colossal has recently won two huge events, one being the uh, Victory Road uh, to Columbus tour, and one was a little while ago being uh, the Melbourne Australia Regional. So let's talk about it. Why is Colossal seeing results? And that's that's the scary thing. Why is Colossal seeing results? It's, it's in a format where we see Groudon and we see Kyogre and sometimes we see them on the same team. We see Blastoise getting used. There's a lot of options for dealing with Colossal. Um, and I think what it comes down to is the fact that it is just reliable damage across the game and the lack of rock types is something we've seen Colossal take advantage of. But we'll get into that into a second. Before we start, if you guys enjoy this video at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like on it. Subscribe to the channel and turn notifications because I bring you daily VGC content. And answer my comment question of the day. Is Colossal going to make a comeback? Is Colossal going to finally win worlds? Let me know and let's go ahead and get into it. So, uh, why is Colossal good? Well, in previous formats when Colossal was good, something that we have noted is a lack of rock types in the in the metagame. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flash this back to Player's Cup 2 and to Player's Cup 1. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a look at the progression of Colossal. And if you want a very in-depth pro uh, progression of Colossal, there's a video on my channel. It's the pinned video on the front page of my channel. It is basically just a video essay on Colossal. So check that out if you want to get more information about the Pokemon in general. But that's a little bit of an older video we're going to talk about today. Um, so Players Cup 1. Won by Santino Tarquino, or Tarquino. Uh, and his team had a Togekiss, Dragapult, Urshifu Rapid Strike, Incineroar, Rillaboom, Colossal. Something to note about the format Colossal is taking place in, a lot of teams don't have a rock type. Why is this important? Uh, so Colossal's max move deals one sixth of the uh, opponent's HP per turn. So by the time the rocks are over, if you haven't switched out, that is what? So one sixth over the course of four turns, you're gonna lose two thirds of your health. That's a little broken. That's a little broken. And why is that so important that you're not a rock type when you're facing it? It's that the only Pokemon immune to it are rock types. So while you could minimize the damage from a max uh, a max wildfire from Charizard by switching in your own Charizard and your own Incineroar, which sometimes you see on the same team, all of a sudden those two Pokemon aren't going to be taking any residual damage over the course of the next few turns. The wildfire is most mostly negated. Um, or you could even switch in your Incineroar, keep your Kyogre on the field. Yeah, the Kyogre is going to be taking residual damage, but overall, your, your team's overall HP isn't going to go down that much. That's the thing. There are so few rock types in the metagame. There's like nearly zero that are relevant right now that Colossal can take advantage of it. And that's where it thrives. Look at this. So first place, Santino. He's got a Colossal. Obviously, there's no rock type on second place. Uh, there's no rock type on fifth place. Uh, was it? Yeah. Tied for fifth. Uh, none in Julian's team. Uh, none in Antonio's team. None in Ben's team. Uh, yeah, like so the vast majority of teams that did well in this tournament didn't have rock types. Why is that? Because rock types weren't good in general. It's hard to find a point. Or it's hard to find a, a use in a rock type if if it's not relevant, you know? Um, let's look at Players Cup 2. This is a format that once again had very few good rock types. Stack Attacker was pretty okay, but it sort of fell off as the format went on. So we see that um, Wolf Glick was able to use this Colossal with effectively the exact same team just the uh, Toic has swapped out for in uh for a galarian moltres this was like an advancement of the team um this was, or it was an adaptation of the team uh to make it a little bit more reliable uh but we can see very very big lack of rock types uh that make it so colossal is able to do a consistent damage as the as the game goes on so 
That's the thing. So Colossal's partner is almost a static throughout teams. You see Incineroar because Fake Out's very important. Obviously, Incineroar is a great Pokemon. You see Rillaboom because it's able to deal with the water types that want to deal with Colossal while also giving it, um, while also giving it health regen as the turns go on with Grassy Terrain. But on top of that, uh, Landorus is very common in series. Um, series seven and onwards. So that grassy train became more important because if the Landorus isn't Dynamaxing, now it's Earthquake is gonna get uh, its damage cut, which is an effect a lot of people forget about. Grassy train specifically cuts the damage of Bulldoze, Magnitude, and Earthquake, I believe. So that's something to keep in mind. And Urshifu Rapid Strike is a Pokemon that's able to not only deal consistent damage throughout the game because of its very strong surging strikes that always deal critical damage, but also hit multiple times, so Focus Sash is in a switch in, but it has access to Aqua Jet to hit your Colossal with a times four effective move, which, you know, it's water type, it's gonna give it Steam Engine, max out its speed, and give it a weakness policy, allowing it to do whatever it needs to. But Dragapult is another Pokemon that can do that. If you end up facing a Pokemon that has Fake Out, if they lead off like Incineroar versus your, let's say they lead off like Incineroar plus uh, Landorus, and they want to go for Fake Out into your Urshifu and a Max Quake into your Colossal so you don't get to do anything, that option is off the table if you simply lead off with Dragapult because you're going to outspeed them, you're unflinchable by Fake Out because you're Ghost type and you're going to go for a Surf and effectively get the same effect. That is why these teams are so reliable. So what we see is in the current format, players recognizing the fact that, hey, there are even less rock types than before. And yes, there are answers to Colossal, but they like it doesn't matter what Pokemon you are. It doesn't matter if you resist the hit. If you get hit by a plus two max Vocalith off of Meteor Beam, it's gonna hurt. And not only that, even though there are all these answers to Colossal, the best typing I would argue in this current format is flying, especially these flying electric Pokemon that we see all over the format. We see Thunderous and Zapdos on nearly every team. We see Regieleki on, on nearly every team. These are very important Pokemon uh, to beating Hyper Offense because if you're running like a supportive Thunderous, you're going to be able to uh, go for Eerie Impulses. If you're running like an offensive Thunderous, it's also very important for dealing with Incineroar. If your team's very Intimidate weak, your Thunderous is going to be able to use its Defiant Boost to deal with that. But what are you going to do if an Urshifu Rapid Strike just Aqua Jets a Colossal and eliminates your best answer to Intimidate spam? All of a sudden, that Incineroar on the Colossal team is going to be able to do whatever it needs to do, and it's going to be able to do it so well. Um, but yeah, and here's another thing. You know, Colossal has a lot of answers in this format, obviously. Um, Kyogre, Groudon, none of those want to deal with Rillaboom. Groudon especially doesn't want to deal with um, Urshifu Rapid Strike if they can get rid of the Sun. Uh, and Zacian and Eveltal, that's basically just... It, how do I say it? Like, we saw Zacian, uh, Galarian Moltres, and the usual Colossal crew be very effective in previous formats. I believe it won a major tournament at some point, but I forget which one. All that's happened at this point is the Galarian Moltres has turned into an Eveltal. It's the same effective team, but even bulkier and even harder to break while also still being hyper offensive. If there is a, if there is like a team that can be hyper offensive, but still very balanced in this format, I would say it's colossal teams with Zacia and Eveltal. They have defensive tools and they definitely have offensive tools. So yeah, and just looking at general matchups, Colossal is a great answer to opposing Zacian. Colossal is a great answer to opposing Calyrex Shadow. Granted, they're not running um, Mudshot, which a lot of them aren't. Uh, so you can hit them with that plus two max Volkleth, and they will go down if they're Sash from that residual damage. Even if you're like, even even if you're a Kyogre, getting hit by a plus two max Volkleth and then going down in one to two turns or getting hit in range of like a, a, a Rillaboom's Grassy Glide, despite the fact that you're Dynamaxed. That's huge because you're losing a Dynamax Pokemon early and taking less key pieces from your opponent's side of the field than the Colossal is because not only are they going to take one Pokemon from you, even if it's a trade, they get residual damage for the rest of the game. And that's the biggest part about it. So yeah, we also see um, the Colossal win the Victory Road Tour. This is a much bigger achievement than the Melbourne Australia uh, tournament. Not to you know talk down about Sam Pandelis, phenomenal player amazing win like you know that's obviously completely factual you win a you win a regional tournament you're an amazing player what i'm saying is that it's it's on colossal that's where the feat is for that i'm comparing here a colossal team winning an 87 player tournament is is like yay that's pretty cool but when you win a 337 player tournament that's 
a lot bigger because here we see that there were seven Swiss rounds plus top eight limb. This one's nine Swiss rounds plus X2 single elimination top cut. So basically it, it, it becomes a situation where there's much less room for, or there, there's, there are a lot of rounds and you have to play consistently for a longer time. So yeah, like that's, that's huge. Uh, I, I don't know. Like it's just the fact that Colossal is somehow still being viable in this climate of a VGC metagame is is just what baffles me. That's just what baffles me. Uh, usually in these videos, I would go over results from the rest of the teams and just talk about, you know, hey, this was a pretty cool tournament. Um, but I've been doing that for a while. I might do that for the next big event. Uh, however, for this video, I generally just wanted to talk about why Colossal seeing a comeback and why it's so good. And, and it's like a cycle. How do I say it? it it's, it's like a cycle. So funny enough, the, this version of a Colossal team, the Colossal team with Zacian, Eveltal, and the usual Colossal crew, um, that was like one of the first archetypes that people came up with when this new rule set came out. And a lot of people dismissed it. They said it was inconsistent. It wasn't great. It took metagame development to reach a point where we're like, okay, Colossal's good. Like it's, it's the exact same team that we started with, but now we circle back and we see, okay, it turns out this is a variable, this is a very viable team. Why? Thunderous, Regieleki, Zapdos are everywhere, Charizard is everywhere. Uh, you can outspeed a Venusaur in the sun with a Colossal, that's another big thing. Uh, yeah, it's it's that Colossal's insane speed allows it to do whatever it needs to do wherever it is. You could even run it under Trick Room if you wanted to be a little bit cheeky and run Bulldoze, because it's slow enough and it still hits just as hard. So yeah, that's all I really wanted to talk about today. Um, I'm going to be going live and tonight I might be practicing with the Buzzwell team to prepare for um, Milwaukee regionals, but I also might just put the Blastoise team and practice Buzzwell uh, exclusively for Patreon or just by myself. Uh, but yeah, if you want to check that out, I'll be going live at 530 CST. And if you guys enjoyed, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, turn notifications, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.